Hello and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett and on this channel we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video we'll be exploring certain properties of liquids like surface tension, viscosity, and capillary action and learn how different intermolecular forces impact them. Let's get started. As I mentioned, uh, during this video, I'm going to be looking at a few different properties, um, uh, particular to liquids, and seeing how intermolecular forces will impact those. So the first uh, property that we're going to discuss is surface tension. And so the surface tension is a property um, that liquids hold that really results um, from the tendency of liquids to try to minimize their surface area. And so to minimize their surface area, liquids form drops that are spherical if there's no gravity in place. So we, of course, we know on the earth there is gravity. So rather than having these spherical bubbles that can exist, we end up seeing um, a layer of, of molecules that do form on that top um, of any liquid and that surface tension can be measured um, accordingly. Now, the layer of molecules on the surface behave different than those interior molecules. Um, because the cohesive forces on the surface molecules have a net pull into the liquid interior, they really act as a surface layer, like a, an elastic skin. And they even allow you to float things on top of them. Their role is to keep the other molecules beneath them together, okay? And so they're really working together to stay adhered to one another to keep that molecule or that, that, that liquid intact. And so there are several things that impact the surface tension, um, but one of the big things is those intermolecular forces. The stronger those intermolecular forces are between their neighboring molecules, the higher that connection will be, the higher, the stronger that surface tension would be. Um, and of course, changing things like your temperature can also impact your intermolecular force, the, the uh, surface tension. So your two take home messages here is that the stronger the intermolecular forces are, the higher the surface tension will be. And by raising the temperature, we can actually reduce the surface tension. Again, raising the temperature weakens those intermolecular forces, separates them. And so that, that strength that resides in that layer of skin would be reduced. And we can see that shown graphically here where we have this decrease in the actual um, uh, surface tension as we change the temperature of the water. All right. So the next property that we're going to discuss is viscosity. So the viscosity of something is the resistance of a liquid to flow. And so in this case here, the larger those intermolecular attra attractions are, the stronger they are, the less likely they're going to flow easily. Um, and we see this when we think about like ionic compounds, those are solid materials, they're not flowing anywhere. And so the take home message here is the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the viscosity will be. Um, other factors that impact the viscosity, not only the intermolecular forces, but also the shape of the molecule. If you're dealing with something that's more spherical in shape, you would expect that it would be less viscous because those molecules can just really roll more easily. Um, also, by changing the temperature that impacts the viscosity, it will lower it because, again, you're giving those um, molecules enough energy to be able to escape. And we can see this decrease in viscosity that occurs as you are changing the temperature. All right, and then the last property that we're gonna talk about is, at least in this video, is capillary action. And so capillary action is the ability of a liquid to flow up, an, up a thin tube against the influence of gravity. So if you've ever seen like a straw and put it in water, you see that that water kind of climbs up the straw. Well, that climbing effect, that is your capillary action and work. Now, the climbing is, is impacted by a couple of things. One, the, the, how narrow or wide the tube is. If you have very narrow tubes, well, it makes it a lot easier for the molecules to work together to climb up the tube. Kind of think like um, a ninja warrior where they jump onto that little, the Spider-Man uh, uh, spider jump uh, obstacle where they got to hit the wall. So if it's a narrow wall, it's easier to hit and stick and be able to crawl up it. But if it's a really wide wall, well, the molecules cannot reach the sides to crawl up easily. Now, the capillary action for is the result of two forces that are working together, your cohesive forces and your adhesive forces. Now, if we look at those words, cohesive, that means us holding together, us neighboring molecules holding together. Adhesive means adhering to something, sticking to something. So what's happening in capillary action, you have the adhesive, which I'm holding on to the side of the wall of the tube, so the molecules are stuck to the wall then also they're holding on to their neighboring molecule and pulling them with them. So I'm stuck and I'm pulling and I'm able to crawl up there. All right. Now, 
again, if you uh, look at how the, the diameter of a tube impacts things, well, this picture is, is really a great representation because in this case, you have all these tubes placed in the same liquid, but notice the height that they're able to climb varies. Well, what may be a bit di difficult to see is the diameter of these tubes. The ones with the lower um, heights have the wider diameters, again, because they, they're struggling to crawl up that, that wall. Um, now, these, uh, this, this competition or, or, or this, uh, yeah, competition that occurs between the cohesive and adhesive forces does impact the type of meniscus that we see um, in a liquid um, situation. So most of the times when you see liquids, we see this concave uh, meniscus where it's going down. Well, what that tells us is that our adhering forces, how well I'm able to stick to the wall, is stronger than my cohesive, what I'm holding on to my neighboring molecules. It's holding, but it's a little bit weaker. And so you see that dip that occurs. Whereas in a mercury um, thermometer, something that can do those metallic bonds with really strong um, intermolecular forces, um, well, then now look at what happens. We have a convex meniscus. And what that tells us, the people that are working together, sticking to each other, are working much more than our adhesive so that you get that curve, that convex curve that occurs. I hope this video helped you guys understand how different intermolecular forces impact surface tension, viscosity, and capillary action. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what other videos you'd like to see. I'll be back with more information later. See you guys in future videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.